wait, and wait, and baby, I'm TFC till I die. Hello, and welcome back to Toronto Till I Die, the Toronto FC fan show. I'm Michael Singh, and have your toes defrosted yet? Have you got that feeling back in your fingers? Well, hopefully a 2-0 win at home and your TTID crew talking about it help warm me up this week as on this week's episode, jam-packed edition as usual, we're going to discuss TFC's home win at a frigid BMO field, a nice 2-0 win against Atlanta United. Uh, we'll continue our 2024 annual player over-unders. We'll get your responses to this week's burning question. And we have a special announcement to close out the show. I want to also add to that, potentially we might have a special guest be joining us as well on this uh, on this episode. So stay tuned for that. Um, but like Tyrese Spicer, jumping, jumping into the loving embrace of John Herman, which is <laughs> so now a thing, by the way. Let's jump to the, this week's show uh, with my co-host, Jeffrey P. Nesker. Jeff, how does 10 points after five games feel? Dreamland. Absolute dreamland. Uh, I'm trying not to drag the people that uh, that are pretending that they called it at the beginning of the season because absolutely nobody did, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> Chris McGirt called it. Nobody. Uh, I can't even lie. D Chris McGirt's had his top four. Mm, I don't know if Turtz McGirt's called it. Turtz, back me up here. Um, all right, Turtz. Anyway, uh, loving the TTC jokes. Uh, Danny is apparently still on it trying to get to the game. So don't spoil it for Danny. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, no, Mike Newell is not still frozen to his seat, but, uh, he's not here today. Very astute of you to notice the boy is busy. He's having a Monday. Uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can do, we can do good in his steed. Yeah. Um, yeah. 10 points after five games, Jeff. I remember in preseason, like towards the end of the preseason, mm -hmm. I asked you, you know, what would it take for you to welcome the Italians back with uh, with a bit of open arms? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we kind of painted this romantic figure and this romantic dream of Toronto FC being, you know, first or second place in the Eastern Conference after, you know, what? And after uh, approaching May. And here we are, mm -hmm. end of March. We're not quite there yet. There's still some some work to go. But five games into the season, one loss, two goals conceded. Toronto FC are tied for second place in Major League Soccer today, <laughs> which is crazy to say. It's crazy. It's craziness. I mean, long may it rain. The vibes are the vibes are immaculate. Um, you know, despite the temperature, which wasn't, but uh, vibes are absolutely immaculate. This is great. Cool. I won't I won't pick your brain too much and push your buttons too much about the Italians just mm. yet. Well, we might get into <laughs> it a little bit, but we're not there yet. Um, mm. Before we do, though, uh, big picture, you know, Toronto FC coming off a 2-0 win against Atlanta United uh, at home at BMO Field. Probably their best performance of the season, I'd say. I don't think it's far-fetched to say that. Um, a lot of people showed up, 17,000, uh, according to John Herman, after the game. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout out to the fans, first of all, who did show up. And, you know, I know it was it was a freezing night there at BMO Field, but I think TFC put on a show for you guys for uh, for all of you that did attend the match. So at least you got that out of it. Um, but yeah, overall, Jeff, let, before we get into like individual performances, 2-0 mm -hmm. win over Atlanta United at home, uh, big picture. What's your takeaway? What's your biggest takeaway from that game? I mean... We can simplify it to a tweet that I uh, I posted. I embedded in my uh, in my good bad ugly column. You know, the logic is pretty simple. Atlanta didn't have their DPS, and we did. And uh, move on on to the next. This was from an Atlanta United fan. Uh, you know, when the DPS are DPing, man, even if they're not scoring goals, they're doing things on the field now, uh, which are creating opportunities for other people and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it, I really do think it's as simple as that. I mean, cold game, uh, missing both both rosters, crazy depleted. Uh, 
you know, if I had to, if I had to do like a knee jerk elevator pitch as to why we are walking away with the three points, that would be it. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I think John Herman even said that before the game. He was mm. like, the difference he's hoping is going to be the fact that Toronto FC have Lorenzo Insigne and have Federico Bernadeschi on the pitch. Well, you know, you look across at Atlanta United and they're missing five starters for this game. They're missing, obviously, Thiago Almada and then Yakamakis as well. Uh, two really, really key guys for that squad. So mm -hmm. we do have to, I'm with you, take it with a bit of a grain of salt. That said, um, it was the first time this year that TFC, I would say, dominated a game essentially from start to finish. Like they were the mm -hmm. better team in this game. Uh, oh, they're, they, game. yeah, one hundred percent. Pitch saying that, uh, it was one hundred percent. It was the first time they won the XG battle, and they they won mm -hmm. it by a lot. I think their XG was close to about three, whereas you know they only gave up zero point five or even less than that. So that is that does speak to kind of. Well, one, it's a step in the right direction at home, despite the mm -hmm. fact, yes, we're playing, they're playing an undermanned uh, Atlanta United side. Um, yeah, sure, we are missing, you know, starters as well. But I think the quality of starters they are missing outweighed ours. Still, I think. Yeah, I mean, go yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, well, I was no. just going to say, you know, we did we did our second episode of uh, of Who Are Ya? Uh, mm -hmm. which will be notorious as it's the only time we're ever going to do score predictions because they're stupid. Um, but, uh, you know, we got the skinny, we got the scuttlebutt and we were, I certainly was looking out for um, that Georgian winger uh, new signing. I cannot remember his name, but we were, we were told uh, he was going to be dangerous and that he had a chip on his shoulder and we absolutely nullified that threat. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was, I was really looking at that and, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, people are saying in the chat we were missing starters as well. Yeah, but we weren't missing the level of starters that Atlanta United were missing. And I think that's a fair assessment. And I don't I don't think anybody can uh, I don't think anybody can really come come to the table and, and dispute that fact. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely important starters like Richie Larea, Jonathan Osorio, Davy Flores is Andrews, you know, pointing out uh, also had Shane mm -hmm. O'Neill leave the game pretty early on and. Lorenzo Insigne, which is something we'll we'll get into a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, still, Atlanta's obviously reliant on those two guys in particular. So it's like TFC missing Insigne and Bernadeschi and asking TFC to go out there and put on a 2-0 you know, performance against a team <laughs> like that. A, a tough ask, a really tough ask. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Still, I don't want us to, to deter from the fact and get shy away from the fact that it was Toronto FC's best game of the season. And I do think the team definitely deserves credit. Uh, like I said, 100%. they came out, put on their best performance of the season, uh, played, you know, attacking football at home, which is such an important thing. Something we haven't seen enough of uh, for Toronto FC this year. Created the most chances they've created by far in a game this season. So uh, a lot of positives to take away. Uh, one of the biggest positives, I'd say, uh, let's start with Tyree Spicer. Uh, scored Mr. First, Inevitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, scored his first Major League Soccer goal in his first uh, career MLS start. Uh, Toronto C's first overall pick, of course, uh, really, really stepped up to the plate in this one. I thought he took his took his goal really nicely, Jeff. What do you think? I mean, the best striker on the field was playing uh, an outside back. That was uh, that was kind of funny. Uh, I, it was coming. I mean, you 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 listen to the uh, you listen to Herdman's post game sound. And I mean, you know, it's like him trying to, you know, how many times did he say, I, I took the lad aside <laughs> and discussed what was going to happen after he scored his goal? It, you know, you saw, you saw sort of a sprinkling of what, of what the kid could do uh, in his limited minutes in, in turbo pitch NYC. Uh, and it was just, I was about to say more of the same, but I think what's so impressive is that it wasn't. I mean, there were there were flaws in his game that you saw uh, in his limited minutes in NYCFC, and I'm not going to be so bold as to suggest that he's eliminated them, but he's certainly done work. There was certainly a visible game over game improvement, um, and he looked hungry, you know. And I I said this, and I'm a, I'm a almost afraid of opening Pandora's box here, but I did say it. It is in print. Um, in a roundabout way. My takeaway from Tyrese, and I'm going way off the map here, is, you know, this is 
what we should be expecting, right? Like we've gotten so used to giving infinite chances to the same group of players. You know, I, I'm remiss to use the the insanity and expect a different result example, even though I just sort of did. But here comes Tyrese Spicer, you know, and thanks to you and, and your wonderful insight, you know, everybody that listens to this show and watches this show was well aware uh, that this pick was essentially the best hope for a plug and play uh, 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 roster spot. And we saw it. We saw it. So, you know, after I celebrated, you know, spicy tea doing spicy tea things, you know, the spice must flow. I immediately got a pang of sort of, oh, ah. Uh, and I, I don't think I was alone in that, you know? And again, I, I small sample size FC, right? But at the end of the day, that's what we wanted. And, and it was refreshing to see it, right? Yeah, I think this was the player that Toronto FC uh, were hoping they'd see more of as opposed to maybe his first appearance, which again, wasn't the worst appearance. Like he had a good ball into Iowa Canola, made an impact right away. Uh, just... Mm -hmm. And it's part of the journey of a young player. You you grow, you get more confident, you start to feel like you can express yourself a little bit more in the side. And, you know, credit to him. He took that jump, you know, maybe a bit quicker than a lot of us thought. Like like yeah. you said, Jeff, like this was a guy who could seamlessly, it seemed like, plug and play into Toronto FC system. Another option, by the way, they have at wingback, which you know, completely kind of fell off our radar as as a potential option a little bit. Um, and he, he stepped up, you know, it's funny. They had a they had the clip before the start of the season about Terry Spicer and what he said John Herman told him. And it was mm. relating him to, you know, he sees a bit of Alfonso Davies in him. I saw a bit of Alfonso Davies in Terry Spicer. And it's not to say that Terry Spicer is anywhere close to the player of Alfonso Davies or that, you know, he's going to be Alfonso Davies. But that mm. play style, the way he moves, the the yeah. way he he drives at the fan, the way he's he's really left footed, but can still, as we saw in the finish, you know, kind of use his right at, at times. I saw the yeah. same kind of vision. I think John Herman was trying to get across where you know he's a type of player that can impact on both sides of the pitch, or defensively and especially offensively when he's driving at defenders. So, for a young mm -hmm. kid to come in first unless start. Uh, I, th I heard an interesting stat on the broadcast, sixth uh, first overall pick in MLS history to score on their first MLS start. Yeah, uh, yeah. And was I wasn't the guess that there were zero when the when the first guy threw it out. He's like, how many do you think there are? And he's like, none. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was, I, that was I knew surprising. Was one. Me about... I, I knew Laren was one, but that's just because can saw hipsterism. But uh, one, our special guest is here. I don't know if you want to bring them on yet i know you were going to queue it up and i completely destroyed that but that's what i do mike i'm an agent of chaos <laughs> <laughs> um anyway uh yeah yeah i you know i it's a rhetorical device but but just to just to sort of maybe, maybe we'll let maybe we'll see what our special i don't know you you're the host yeah you know what to do <laughs> no 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 i'm down, I'm down. all right all okay. right let's go um, so. oh oops <laughs> There she there is. Go. Hello. Yay. Banner Factory. Yeah, hey guys. super happy. We've wanted to do this for a long, long, long time. And happy we missed our chance to get this catered by our new neighborhood hotspot. Mm, mm, fan what is it? What is it? Fa Fancy Burger? I can't remember. We still, burger? we're still. Yeah, yeah I fixed it on the there. fridge that's in the lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Fat Burger lasted in the annex for 22 seconds and it was replaced with like, what must be a money laundering gig, but get this. Apparently they put Velveeta in their burgers with the syringe and I have to have one as gross as that sounds as, as awful as that sounds. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is it all Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys take over. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. Super happy. Honestly, it's, like Jeff said, long overdue. Um, so for anyone listening, to this podcast afterwards anyone doesn't recognize the voice it's annie hart banner factory annie super excited to to have you join our show uh peel the curtain back a little bit uh fun fact annie was the one that you know redesigned all these graphics all the logos for us feels like a while ago but she <laughs> is uh had a huge impact on on our show so annie uh super excited oh, to have guys. you join us Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're just talking and, we're just talking tyree spicer 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And I heard Nesker already stole the Dune quote. So, you know, <laughs> my do. references. <laughs> also, my mom has a bet to see if you can get a word in edgewise between me and Nesker because, you know, the interrupting twins here. Yeah. Oh, I'll have yeah. I'll have a ton of fun. I'll have a ton I'm of fun. I'm sitting on my hands, honestly. I I've actually just started <laughs> sitting on my hand to make sure that I don't do it, but I can't promise anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that was brilliant, man. That was that mm -hmm. was a beauty goal, man. That was uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Annie, what do you what do you think of my uh of my kind of Pandora's box opening statement that ty instantly after Tyree scored his goal, I started thinking about how many chances we've given to all the other Tyree Spicers over the last little while and how we just keep giving chances. And then here's this guy showing us how it's done and yeah. kind of putting egg on our faces. It, I mean, it's always nice to be shown wrong there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've been just looking for the right mindset, the right people just to actually gel again. And mm -hmm. maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Yeah. We, uh, well, speaking of, of right mindset, I think we should transition into Federico Bernadeschi. Mm. Um, cause you, you want to talk about a guy who put in a shift and the amount of ground that he covered while he was on the pitch. I don't have the numbers, but I bet you he was probably leading the way, uh, if not mm -hmm. a very close second, cause his work rate was 10 out of 10. But I thought also his quality was, was right up there. Andy, what did you make of, of Federico Bernadeschi's performance? Not only, you know, last game. We could definitely touch on last game, but I think the season overall. What what have you made of uh, of Fede's performances? You know, I, I'm seeing a lot more teamwork, and I, and I don't. I'm not putting that all on him at all. I'm saying that there's more cohesiveness to the team overall that he feels he can actually depend on people. I'm seeing him sort of supporting a lot more. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Keep it going. Get this, get this moving. Yeah. I think the shift in mentality is, is very obvious from Huge. the team as a whole. And I think John Herman definitely, definitely gets a lot of credit for that. Um, Jeff, just your thoughts on, on Fede's performance against Atlanta. I mean, I got to bring up the all for one snippet because yeah, yeah, I mean, that was ridiculous. That was, who is this guy? I mean, and that's not fair to say, because I mean, we all remember the white pajamas, Come on, TFC. Like he kind of came in that hot and then kind of lost his way. And here he is again. And I loved that guy. We all did. We were all yeah. so charmed by that, by that guy when he first arrived. So it's really nice to see to see that back. Um, he needs to score badly. I mean, you saw the frustration on his face in that in that late uh that late missed chance. And I also I think, listen. I, I, I'll give him all, all the flowers. I'll give him all his flowers right now, and I'll, I will gladly eat humble pie. He still plays hero ball a bit too much. There's still one or two examples of him deciding, you know, I, the, the, the layup where JMR was just sort of running there like his shadow and didn't get, didn't even see anything. And he decided to go uh, 1v like 18 or something when there was a much better option over there. You know, I, I'm not going to hold it against him, but. I sort of am, so I guess I am holding it against him. But but that that to me was that you know it, it, it is still a bit frustrating, right? And and I don't want to paraphrase, but it might have been TFC Reddit over the last couple of days where somebody was saying, you know, there is a danger with players like like they they opened by saying you know Berna was never that guy. He was never a pure goal scorer in Serie A or with the Italian national team. He never ever was. But there's a danger with players when they when they when they come down a league or, you know, from some pers for some perspective, step down several leagues to play in MLS that they can suddenly be the guy right now with yeah. Seba. I would say that worked out, although Seba's positions and, and the stuff that he played when he was with Juve and, 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 and elsewhere were similar, but not necessarily the guy. I think. Fede was paid like he was going to be the guy and maybe started to believe his own press about being the guy. And it's a tough habit to break because certainly, you know, when you're used to playing at a certain level, and again, I, I don't play, but I have to assume when you're used to playing at a certain level and you see the game at a higher speed, you think you can do things that you wouldn't necessarily do at the level that you sort of became accustomed to. And it may, it may, may be a bad habit that, that he has to break himself up. But I, I, 
I don't know. I'm throwing this question out to you. Do you think it's because he still doesn't trust certain teammates? Cough, cough, JMR. Or do you think it's maybe bad habits that he's that he's built over the last year in chaos? It's it's a good question. Um, so I will say on the on that JMR play, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it was as bad as it looked. And hear me out. Here's why. So he's he's driving at, at a defender. It's a 2v1, right? The defender's taking up the right-hand side to begin with. So therefore, like, the defender is anticipating that Fede is going to pass it to his right and lay it off. He's expecting that. Now, mm-hmm. it could have been to a point where maybe the defender couldn't have done anything even if he played it off to his right, and maybe that's what a lot of people saw. But Fede made the decision because you have to force the defender to make a decision. They have to either commit mm-hmm. to the ball or they have to commit to the player. When they commit in that split second is when you're either supposed to make that decision to lay it off or to take it yourself. So what Fede was doing, he was cutting across to his left to force the defender to kind of shift over and lead JMR. But by the time uh, that happened, Fede was already committed to to the strike, and that was the best option mm. So I think there was a little bit of uh, that the context was maybe taken. I don't I know. I mean, he was all like, alone out there running around like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. so it was like, pretty it was, easy to see it that way. Yeah, have, yeah. He probably should have mm-hmm. passed in the ball, but I don't think it was just necessarily him playing hero ball. I think he was actually just trying to force the defender to making a decision. However, there certainly are still instances we do see the hero ball. We're seeing it less and less. Uh, yeah. This 100% season. agreed. Yeah. And he's, he's yeah. really bought into kind of that wingback role, which, you know, you started off the conversation by saying when Fede was playing overseas, he was never really that that goal scorer. So when he's at his best, I think that's what it is. And I think that's what John Herman has done such a good job of, of getting Fede to buy into, you know, not having to score goals to be effective. He doesn't, it, it's weird to say because he's paid so much and TFC don't really have a ton of goal scorers, but I mm-hmm. truly feel like Fede is still being a very effective player despite the fact he has zero goals and zero assists this season and that's okay to me that's okay that not he for him he wants one it. bad and, and i Perhaps. think that speaks to the disconnect right when you're paid dp money in mls you know you can't be a a, a you know a deep line playmaker like they don't want you know well i i guess a, a 10 of, of pirlo's quality would probably be a dp in mls but i'm i i, I get what you're throwing out um before i forget I think um, I love that insight that maybe it didn't look as bad on JM on the JMR thing. I think we owe I owe an apology uh, for talking about that sitter being such a sitter last week because if you watch the replays this week, it's obvious there was a bit of a contact on the defender and it completely changed the trajectory of the ball. So I just wanted to have a, a, <laughs> a little. That. A little, uh, a little bit of uh, 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 an apology from the editor's desk there. Yeah, yeah. No, we say a lot of stuff on this show, so when we get it wrong, I'm happy you own up to that. Um, oh, yeah, any, any. I'd love to get your thoughts on. You know, we touched on at the beginning about him being a little bit more selfless, but sort of what Jeff was touching on. You know, some of the hero ball because we are still seeing it. Um, is that is that something that we should just continue to sp- expect out of a guy like Bernadeschi who's brought in to be a bit of a difference maker? Do you think they're... I mean, the pressure's on him. He's been framed yeah. around him to be that. Uh, whether he feels he should be that or not, I think he's hearing that in his ear quite a bit. Uh, and also, you know, when you feel like you've been left out there trying to do things on your own, there is a lot of reluctance to let other people in to do things. So there may be a lot of that, but definitely a noticeable change in 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 attitude which is yeah awesome awesome for sure it's it's definitely easier when when things are going the right way right now mm. for him to c- continue to maintain that attitude and so that's you know, all I we guess. have to do all we have to do is keep winning yeah. and he'll be there fine right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's and, like the secret of of this of this season right like just keep winning. We want the vibes because I don't want to be sad again. I think the entirety of TFC <laughs> fandom is like, I don't care. I don't care if they're if they're like eating babies to get that goal. Just do it because I'm sick of being sad. One hundred 
Sick of being sad is pretty much the yeah. state of affairs for us all, right? <laughs> yes, Gord, Gord Wilkes, you can put me in a in a dunk tank and throw apples and try and, and dunk me if it will make you happy, all right? I had and to bring that one up. me in public Gord, square. Yeah. Gord giving Jeff a hard time, saying yeah. Jeff's going to have a lot to apologize if things, <laughs> about if things uh, keep going this way. Um, uh, were any of us there on Saturday? I noticed that we've 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 avoided it because yeah, nope. no what, live Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I was there, man. Oh, good, good, good. It was, good. It was I know, cold. I know. I know. Newell was there. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna blame. Can you Alicia hear my voice? It's just coming back now. Oh, oh yeah, I love yeah, it. Now I, now yeah. I notice. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And how how cold was it? Oh, it was uh, cold. Yeah. It, it was. And so just just like the bitter cold where, you know, if you got the blizzard and stuff, there's a little more energy to it. But it was just mm. cold. Um, yeah, like I, as we packed up the banners, I'm pretty sure I felt some of them cracking a bit. So, Well, that's no good. That's cold. Yeah, that's no good. Hopefully it's the last, it was knock on wood, the last like cold game of the season that we got to go through. You guys got to go through there. Um, I would mind at the end of the guys. season. I could do like cold at that end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's easier to do cold when you're uh, when you're in the playoffs, working towards an MLS Cup. Yeah. Uh, moving on, I got called out on social media because I was the guy that was like, "Quajo is going to lose minutes to to Maddie Longstaff," and somebody said, "Well, Nesker, we never considered Quajo and Maddie Longstaff," <laughs> and uh, and quite honestly. <laughs> I thought they looked pretty good out there. Quasio got a bit of that Davy Flores in him on the night. Uh, he, he made some really, really, really astute tackles, whereas where he looked like uh, a different player out there. Yeah, Annie, what'd you think of what'd you think of Alonzo's game? Yeah, but, but I gotta say it was pretty impressive, and and the long staff too. Like yeah. again, it's that feeling that it's all sort of like in the relative zone of falling into places. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get there yet. It's in the zone of coming. Yeah, it's in the zone. It's yeah, in the zone. yeah, yeah. We've not um, I, before, never. Yeah, I, I think I think Jeff, you you kind of hit the nail on the head. We we saw a little bit of Davy Flores in him. Yeah, some really big, important tackles out of Alonzo, and he knew. I I think heading into this one that he had to step up and fill that void. That Davy Flores obviously left a very big void as we as we've seen through the first four matches of the season, and there was, you know, three four plays where Alonso comes up with with a, a tackle that shifts the momentum, shifts the play, and turns it around going the other way. And that's something you know since he since he really joined here and started here, I think that's something we've been calling for out of Alonso is mm -hmm. to just get a little bit more of that nastiness to his game, get a little bit more of that ball winning ability if you're going to play through the spine of toronto fc we all know your skill on the ball unquestionable most uh, <laughs> i don't know if I'm, it's probably the most skilled midfielder that we have uh, on the ball right he's the guy if, if if i want somebody on the ball in the middle of the park it's alonzo coelho um but then that other side of the game is is kind of what we've been hoping to see come along and i think you know the effect that davy flores has had on alonzo i think is is quite obvious and we saw mm -hmm. a lot of that on on Saturday night. And I thought it was probably his best game of the season overall. I thought he faded a little bit. I mean, I think he fades in games, uh, which is, I guess, in a roundabout yeah. way, me me going against my own protestations that he should start every single one. Uh, it's it's a habit. I mean, he's young, and it was cold, uh, and it was chaos in NYC, and it was turf. You know, so so. I mean, but again, we don't want to wait until June to say, oh, we can finally say whether or not Quajo can do a full 90. Um, you know, Quajo fades and Longstaff can't do a full 90. Like that's that's facts. So, you know, that depth does have an asterisk, right? Like you can't I I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me that Matty was a 10 times the player he was you know, the first 15 minutes than, than you know, his, his last 15 minutes. So that was a concern for me. Uh, you know, just going down my notes, shout out Ame Babika. He didn't do an NYCFC. And when he came on for Cheyenne O'Neill, I was very, 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 very worried. Uh, yeah. Herdman had some nice things to say about him, that he's been patient. You know, uh, he didn't do his tell, 
or anything. So he wasn't like, you know, I mean, Mabika has <laughs> been really patient and I really, really like him. I mean, he's a, he's a great player. That usually means he's, he's on his way to the glue factory, but like, sure. you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think he was great, uh, for a person of that size and stature to not be an aerial threat on attacking set pieces and not be a defensive strength on defensive set pieces. And eh, that's a problem. But uh, he wasn't terrible. Uh, I wonder what. Here's another think about one. I mean, maybe uh... Oh, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to Seager Rostad. I think we. Okay, I think cool. he deserves an entire uh, a line of questioning. But but would you agree with I mean, maybe Did you did did he fill you with dread or were you okay with 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 his performance? Okay, good chat. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Rosted was great. Uh, let's just move on. He, I, I, people are saying it was his best performance in a TFC kit. I'm not sure if I agree, but he was pretty solid out there. Yeah, Annie, what'd you think? Of, what'd you think of Sigurd? Y you know, uh, my initial apprehension took a back seat pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, he was, he was doing all right out there for sure. Um, yeah, I got I got to get over that. Yes, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're not going to repeat the same mistakes. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all oh. have a bit of like PTSD from from last season, one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it does speak to kind of this trend with Herman, where it's like we're seeing players who, you know, quite frankly, most people wrote off after last season, yeah. and we're seeing them start to find roles in this team. Right. It seems mm -hmm. like there's, you know, one of the words that was thrown around quite a bit. I can't even tell you how many times mm -hmm. after Bob Bradley was was kind of let go was clarity. Right. The players wanted more clarity out of it, what it, what it is they wanted to do. Same thing after I'd say the ton, Terry Dunfield era, you know, clarity was kind of that word. And, you know, while it was a goal that they were working towards, I don't think they ever really achieved that. I think they're starting to achieve that under John Herman. And the reason being is like you mentioned there, M. M. Abika come in, come in mid game for a center back. He's able to to find his place, find his role into the game. And you know he didn't really look out of place. Sigurd Rose said another guy we we touched on it, about selling into his his role this season due to injuries. You know Alonzo Coelho, you know, Matty Longstaff coming in from Europe, being able to kind of be a bit of a Swiss Army knife there in the middle of the park. You have your wingbacks who we've got to gone through three, four, five different wingbacks. Yet every single one of those wingbacks come in and they look like they're difference makers on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, Jaquil Marcioretti, I thought, again, one of his best games in a TFC shirt. Sure, there I think was it might some... have been his best game. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I definitely he was everywhere. It. Yeah, he was might, everywhere. There, there were some moments everywhere. where, like, you know, I think he left a, ba a back pass short and... You know, they they almost capitalized on that chance, which would have been a huge talking point had it gone in the net. Yeah. But aside from mm -hmm. from maybe something like that, I thought the toughness, like you said, Jeff, he was everywhere. You, you see how smart he is on the ball, especially when he wins the ball back and he just makes, you know, a, a shift of his body or a, a, a quick pass and all of a sudden he escapes from pressure. Um, Again, it's the confidence. It's the confidence of coming out on him. Uh, and I think might, last yeah, season, yeah. He was like a little intimidated to be playing with these guys who are supposed to be superstars, you know, uh, and not really taking the initiative. I think he's he's getting it. Yeah, and that's that's such a good point. Also, you know, it's as a result of injuries, but it's the playing time too. Yeah. I think throughout preseason, yeah. John Herman really hyped up Jaquil. And quite frankly, we were expecting Jaquil to play a big role for this TFC team. And then all of a sudden, Richie Larea gets, you know, purchased again by Toronto FC. And it's kind of deja vu for Jaquil. Yeah, yeah, but he also got that big that. basketball bump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Huge basketball bump. Like, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I think I could count JMR back passes on one hand, and that to me is a marked improvement. I realize there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. He's super talented. He sees the game. So if it's not perfect, he's going to recycle the play, which, yeah. you know, you can't you can't be too mad at that. It's not aesthetically pleasing, but it's the safe choice. But this kid's got skills, and 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 MLS is chaos, so he should trust his skills a bit more. That comes from confidence and reps, and and 
it's mm -hmm. it's no secret. So the fact that we've been screaming for it for what seems like years, and finally somebody's listening because it just felt so crazy. It's like this kid's good. He's great. He's great. He's in the closet. You're not going to see him ever, but trust me, he's great. And then he comes out and he, he's not great because he needs reps and he needs confidence. So it's like, well, stop putting him back in the, in the closet, like let him ferment out there. So, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to see that sort of thing. And it's, it's, it's lovely to see it really, really. Yeah. Oh, and you can see it in his eyes. Like the press photo that's going around of him. Mm -hmm. There's a hunger and a, and a passion in there. That before was sort of like a little subdued, and you know, he could he's he's picked, he's got a taste of it now. And you know what, too, uh, in a way, I, I almost feel like while maybe we were putting a bit more emphasis on this season as being you know the season he's kind of got to take a step forward, I almost feel like the pressure is off of him a little bit, where he kind of had one eye towards you know Europe and the big teams that were all circling mm -hmm. him throughout the, his younger years, right. He always had, you know, and for good reason. There was there was legitimate ties there. He obviously went on some training stints to, with other teams overseas. But I think because of the year that he had last year, he almost knew heading into this year he's got to do what's what's in front of him. He he kind of can't get carried away a little bit and look towards Europe. He's got to have a good year with Toronto FC. So I think there is almost that aspect to it too, where I think he's all zeroed in on you know. Not necessarily that next move, but about this season and having a good year for it. So, I think that's a that's a good point. What's up? I, while you were talking, I had like an aha moment. Herdman is making a very good case for being the next cause celebre in European coaching circles. Do you think that this idea of not like in so many ways not worrying about Europe is because? These guys have made kind of the equation in their head that if they get in Herdman's good graces, maybe he'll take them to Europe with them when he goes, you know, on on his next <laughs> adventure, right? Like because because you know, as much as I love Bob Bradley, he's not going to Europe, right? So playing for Bob Bradley and getting on Bob Bradley's good graces means you know, cool TFC loves you. That's not where I want to be in Real Madrid, but you know, is there is there a world where these guys are now thinking? I, if I hitch my wagon to Herdman, he can take me to the stars, you know, and I don't have to worry about anything else sort of thing and how that's kind of playing out. And again, I just thought of this, so I don't have an answer, but <laughs> I've got like goosebumps going because it, it feels like that may actually be somewhat of the case. Uh, Jeff, I think you're out here playing chess and everyone <laughs> else is playing checkers then. Um, mm -hmm. you, maybe there's a bit more of that with, with the men's national team. Right, I think Herman still has a lot of pull there. Obviously, has a lot of connections still with that when men's national team knows that uh, the current head coach of the men's national team very well. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe there's something there. I, I, I think it's there, just... there was a lot of crying out for him in the uh, the V's chat the other night too. Yeah. Uh, I saw a lot of that, and I think maybe his dad popped up very subtly. Ooh, it was just a gentle little my boy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's. I, I almost think it's just more so the day to day of of John Herman and just being around John Herman. I think one of the things we we talked about extensively is just how unique he is at motivating his players and getting to know his players and and you know trying to get the best out of his players in in ways that you know maybe the traditional managers don't. I think it's more so that as opposed that it is as opposed to it being them hitching their wagons to a guy who's, who's Europe bound, which you might at this rate, <laughs> who knows? He might be at this Europe rate. Bound. We won't even see his dust. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and we'll happily, we'll all drive him to the airport, you know, but uh, yeah. Uh, people are screaming. They want to talk about Mr. Short shorts, cozy Thompson. Do we want to talk about Mr. Short shorts, cozy Thompson? Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can touch on uh, Mr. Short shorts. Cozy There's Thompson. definitely nobody that yelled, the goal is shorter than your shorts aim there. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I mean, mad respect, mad respect yeah. for that temperature and that length oh, of, of short. Yeah. Mad respect. I mean, you know, uh, the, the Canadian game, congratulations, Canada. We're going to the Copa. I think that's all we're going to have time for. But, uh, uh, you know, people were like, oh, Alistair Johnson, he's not wearing, he's not wearing a long sleeve shirt. Well, <laughs> Cozy Thompson's like, hold my pants, baby. <laughs> it's like, that was, <laughs> that was mental. Um, I thought he looked okay out there. 
you know, I wasn't, I wasn't blown away, but I think that's kind of cozy this year. I think who he is this season. It's not, it's, you know, it's a, it's seven. It's a, it's a proper seven, you know, uh, uh, pants optional. Right. But like, you know, and, and that's not bad and someone's got to do that. So I, I think that we can celebrate that cozy kind of going into a role player and that's perfect for his needs and our needs right now, you know, or, or I, I see that smirk, mm-hmm. Mikey, and I know you're about to rip me a new one. So. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like, listen, you're right. I think, I think you're right about, uh, Kosey being a role player for this team. Uh, he's probably a lot further down the depth chart than they've had to use him as, um, just given the injury situations. Uh, I think mentality, uh, personality, character, all those things are an 11 out of 10 with Kosey Thompson. And I think he has the drive uh, day in, day out to get better. And I think John Herman challenged him to be a bit more like, you know, a Davy Flores, where like he's meaner, tougher to play against, a guy who can control the ball in the middle of the park a little bit, just at least move the play side to side when when need to. Um I've always found Kosey's at his best when he's driving forward. I found him when he's at his best when he's progressing the ball. He's had his, he has a bit of a deceptive pace with the ball uh, that I don't think we get to see enough out of this version of Kosey Thompson. I don't. I think you're right, Jeff. He's a safe option. He comes in. You know what you're going to get out of Kosey. It's just I don't think it's it's very aside from he scored a cracker by the way his first MLS goal. I don't know if you mm-hmm. if you remember that. Um, but it was a volley top of the box, but I don't think we're going to get many of those moments from Kosey Thompson. He's never going to be a player that, you know, fans come away from the game saying, Oh, did you see that number 47 play? That guy was such a good player. He's never going to be that guy. That's just not who Kosey is, but he's definitely a guy that can, you know, come off the bench and provide minutes uh, in the way that he has been, I think so far this year. Yeah. And he's not looking defeated. Yeah. Again, last season. Yeah. That's important. That's important. Yeah. He's taken yeah. his knocks too. So, you know, he's kind of back here with his, you know, at a slightly reduced uh level and it's nice to see that that you know, he's he's positive about it, right? Like, you know, in the same way that we can assume Ami Mabika was about not seeing any minutes and sort of being on the sidelines. Um DeAndre, I want to bring him up because he did everything right except for that one moment that he didn't. And it was really annoying because he was making the most thankless ghost runs all game, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and there were like sometimes just to tire himself out, it looked like, because he was never, ever getting the ball, but there he was doing, doing his work. And then the one time it's still, it's served to him on a plate. I honestly, maybe a goal, certainly an early goal of the year candidate. Like that was just glorious Mm -hmm. um can we defend that miss or is it indefensible Uh, it was it was a bad miss i don't think there's there's two ways about it it's a wide open header at six yard box middle of the net just doesn't get the right connection on it um maybe there was a lot of pressure because you know how nice that that build-up was by the way Mm -hmm. italians look like they're having fun again on the pitch which is nice to see um, I said in my column, I prefer those kind of DP shenanigans to the comedy stylings of Pozuelo and Piatti and whatever the hell that penalty kick uh, funny weird was that like I like my <laughs> DPs to do those sort of things. They yeah. took souls, man. That was hilarious. But like, OK, they must have tried that on the training pitch. Right. So, I mean, DeAndre has been no. injured, so maybe he wasn't on the end of that when they were dicking around in the training pitch, but I'm just trying to find a reason why I'm not celebrating that as a goal of your candidate. Let me be completely honest with you, because <laughs> that should have gone in. Um, Let me uh, ask you, Jeff, before... if that is, if that is Io Akinola, or if that is Prince of Wusu, you know, mm-hmm. on the end of that, what are you saying about that chance? It's a glorious chance. You should bury it every time. But there it is. I think that, yeah. that that's the takeaway. And it was just an unfortunate miss from a guy who, missed a lot of the the preseason due to injury a guy may not have a sharpness back 
Uh, mm-hmm. But a guy, I think, as you said, does a lot of the right things that you like to see out oh, of your number nines that, so many that maybe some right of our other number nines don't offer. But that does transition into... Uh, oh my God, here we nine. go. Perfect segue. I set you up. You knock him down. Mm-hmm. They scored a goal. We got a goal out of a number nine. Prince of Usu, a guy out of a number out of 99. We got a goal out of a 99. There. So you can take that right to the bank. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. guy, I've, I've been buying so much stock into Prince of Usu. Uh, finally starting to pay dividends. He gets on the, the score sheet. Not the prettiest goal of his career, but sometimes you see maybe that that's, <laughs> that's just what you need maybe to get the monkey mm-hmm. off your back a little bit. Um, Annie, what did yeah. you think? And Prince's I mean, performance? Was, you could feel it in the stance. It was just yeah. like, it, and like you said, monkey off his back. It's just breaking it through. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's sweet. Do you see what I you see there, have- Prince? Do you see do you see a player that could uh could be I don't want to say bonafide starter, but could be an impact striker for Toronto FC? Have you seen that? I mean it's there. Yeah. You know, it's, it could it, come out. Would we be fine with that? Yeah, yeah. I think that I agree with that. Like I think you see a lot of the starting points. It's there. We yeah. It, so. yeah. Yeah. Fair? Do you have any faith he's going to score another this season? What did, didn't it oh, I mean, I'm not talking to you because you bought all the stock, which you should be heating at home. <laughs> but uh, I'm talking, I'm talking to Annie. Do, yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, because that I was a Patrick Mullins goal, and we all know how 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 adored Patrick Mullins is in TFC land. So I I, like, I would be happy to be blown away by him. Put it that way. If we if he mm-hmm. ends up going all in like that, it would be amazing. But. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, here's here's Aaron. Uh, he's he's taking the words right out of my mouth. He was so bad the rest of the game. He was worse after he scored the goal than he oh was before he scored it, which is which is weird to me. Like it's almost impressive. Like it's it's like a it's you know it's like being invited to the TARDIS and being like, whoa, there's all this space in here. Like it was it blew my mind. Now again, it was cold outside, so I'm going to I'm just going to offer cold margin. Um. The only other thing I have on my list before we get to the industries is Gavron. How impressive. Like, he looks amazing out there. I, I'm i going to say this. Miss me with the bad distribution. We won an MLS Cup with a goalkeeper with terrible distribution, right? We've got, you know, yeah. Yeah. everything else is is fine. Um, I don't understand this. I was this curious about that, that mm-hmm. Jeff. So I looked into the numbers. Uh Yeah. He is some of the best distribution numbers in Major League Soccer this year. Uh, you know what? I, I don't disagree with you. I think people are just so quick to point out bad distribution because it's a buzzword around TFC circles. But yeah. he's not that bad. He's he's not that bad. And, you know, considering what our opinion of him was off the back of that stretch where I think he led in like four goals every five seconds. And then we never saw him again. And we were thinking about Greg Renjinsing or putting a pile on there instead. Uh, this guy, this kid's amazing. Like he's a bona fide number two clean sheets are, are what are they? I mean, last year I didn't know what they were. And this year we're just collecting them like, uh, like first on the uh, allocation list a couple years ago. Like, so, you know, it's great. I, no complaints. Kid's amazing. He's amazing. Like he's gonna push Sean for starts when he gets back at this rate. Ooh. Not really. Yeah, Not I really. Know. I mean, I Sean Johnson's <laughs> ridiculous. But, but this Talk is a down. great. This is a great guy to deputize. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 If Sean Johnson doesn't, you know, his he's up. He's out of contract at the end of this year. If Sean Johnson doesn't, you know, show signs that you know he wants to resign or if he wants to test free agency. I wonder if that incentivizes Toronto FC to maybe dangle Sean Johnson to a couple of teams and make him a bit more available than maybe they had been willing to in the past. You know. Okay, my skin's starting to go like this when you say that. Just I know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to let go. I don't want to let go. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, yeah. I, I, he's so important to Toronto FC, and yeah. most nights, <laughs> probably their best player, uh, Sean Johnson is, and I. And even myself, like hearing myself say that, I'm like, do I want to follow through with this thought? Do I yeah, want to yeah. finish that sentence? However, you know, having a guy like Luca Gavrin, who is showing that he's capable of, you know, filling that void when Sean Johnson isn't there, you know, credit to also TFC's defense, who really didn't allow too, too much and force Gavrin to mm-hmm. make too many yeah. tough stops in this one. 
it does it does make you wonder. It does make you wonder at least a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. I got uh, Kevin Long gets beat yeah. on pace at least once a game. That's not good. We got to do something but, about that. But wins every single ball in the air. It feels like mm. fair. So trade off. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes that's maybe good. Sometimes maybe that, yeah. That position though, yeah. like your middle central center back. It's kind of like when I think of that, I immediately think of Stephen Vittoria because that was the the guy that Sean Herman used in that role and yeah, very similar profiles, right? Decent on the ball, mm. leader at the back really good in the air now we just got to see kevin long get up there and and pop a goal or two in and he will yeah. really be our you know our victoria of toronto fc victoria is also slow as a tank as well so that's a that's a exactly pretty, uh, apt comparison yeah yeah good call um good call okay uh lorenzo insigne injury i think we have to talk about it uh yes we do did not look great john herman coming out after the game saying it's a hamstring injury He's set for an MRI, uh, which I believe went down yesterday. Uh, we'll wait for an official update uh, from John Herman. However, you know, it must be noted a lot of lower body injuries in the past from Insigne in particular. And this one, like he was usually when you you pull a hamstring or you, you know, you tweak your hamstring, whatever it is, it's doesn't look as bad, I guess, as the way that Insigne made it look. Like it, I almost thought for I was, I was thinking for a little bit, like it could be like his knee or something, just based on mm -hmm. the way that he was limping yeah, yeah. off, walking yeah. off. So I do, I'm, I am concerned about the extent of the injury. Um, I mean, the I guess factor there too, right? That's it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me, let me. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, I, I think that he's been given carte blanche to do his own load management. And so, you know, because he's so important and because there's all that going around, I think the second he felt something out of whack, he went down, avoided putting weight on it. Didn't want to be the guy that contributed to his own destiny of maybe being injured longer than he'd like. So he was just extra safe about it. I'm going by the pajamas at the end. The man's fine. He'll be back in two weeks. You know, they're going to, they're going to so. take, those that they were sick they were sickening those pajamas it's pajamas <laughs> right like i don't i don't know maybe it's not pajamas um but yeah i i i'm strangely not worried and this could just be me being foolish and riding vibes because i don't want to be sad again but i feel like some of it was performative and some of it was you know him being his own nurse essentially and just you know so obviously we're we're looking for things and he did it it didn't look great but I, yeah, his I'm reaction to it, it was like yeah. he was covering his face. It was clearly like in dis distress. That could just be because you know he went down injured again, not knowing the extent of the injury. But yeah, but scary thoughts because I don't know. Annie, I'll ask you this: Can Toronto C be a good team without Lorenzo and Signe? Oh man, I, I really that's such a good question. I really want to say yes. I really want to see everyone sort of step up for him you know uh and we're talking about change of mentality maybe there's the mentality that we can do this for him in a way yeah. um i yeah uh, i'd hate to see us just crumble again yeah i know i think that that was the biggest thing and he's he's honestly been when he's been on the pitch he's been such a good player for this team this season he's been mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's been kind of like that valve they can kind of go to when they're under pressure and he can, you know, with the way that he sees the game, just a, a quick slip of a pass, a quick turn, whatever it is. Like he's a guy that there's a bit so of magic pressure. there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we're seeing it a bit more and more this year and it speaks to that kind of the attitude change. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but yeah, if, if you, you take away that, that, pressure release point out of your team what happens that that's kind of the biggest thing for me let alone what he creates offensively and tfc don't create enough offensively but yeah. just that what is it going to do to the rest of the team how does this ripple how does this affect is something that you know would leave me well, let's not concern. have to worry about it yeah there yeah, it is. Let me, let me be, yeah let me be let me be mr positivity here because you know it hasn't been that long since we've enjoyed 
his performances on the pitch, right? So it's not in our muscle memory, right? Like if there was ever a time to upset the apple cart, it's now where we're building our identity, right? And so that's why we're seeing all this next man up stuff, right? There's there's yeah. not a lot of scar tissue on this on this team yet. So it's never ideal for like your best player and, and most expensive uh, signing to go down. But this might be the best time of his injuries to go down, right? Um, yeah, interesting. Certainly, we're not going to see Cash Money take his spot because I don't think we're ever going to see Cash Money get a minute on this team at this point. Uh, and as disappointing as that is to me, I'm not going against what I presume her been seen in training. So. You know, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think anyone money. can question John Herman at this point. As much yeah, as we yeah. want to see cash money, as much as we want to see TFC's exciting young signing from a you know six months ago, whatever John Herman's doing is working. And at this point, yeah, you know, yeah. I, he's earned <laughs> cash in Malula. He's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> he's a, he's not even real. <laughs> 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 Let's transition though, Jeff. Um, yeah, you want to do some hurt as word, huh? Yeah, just favorite segment, Annie. If you haven't seen it yet, get ready. You're in for yeah. for quite the treat. Oh, oh I didn't I'm actually sad. load. I didn't actually load your hurt is the word yet. So uh, that's fine. Do, do, let's do, just do, do. Let's just do Mike's and in yours. No, no, I loaded it. Okay, bye. Here we go. Can I see that paper for a sec? Huh, that's odd. What are you talking about? Oh, have you not heard? Heard what? <laughs> heard, 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 heard the word. <laughs> heard, 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 heard the word. Don't you know about the herd? Mike Singh is so sick of herd is the word. He can't even, he can't even pretend. Oh, I think, I think anyway, I here's the ultimate herd is the word will be his mm -hmm. reaction watching your intro. That's all. That's all I'm really hoping for, and then I can, and then I can retire the segment. So you know, put a good word out because because Mikey Singh's getting sick of this. But anyway, here's Mikey Singh's pick. Yeah, I think you're seeing his frustration right at the end of the game, that last opportunity. But he's been awesome. Um, I, I mean, and so much was said about the two Italian lads before I came. There were this, there were that. But this this man is is really just giving himself to the team. He's willing to play wing back. He's willing to play inside forward, wide forward. He'll press. He'll recover back. And then there he is in the ninetieth minute, one v one, just showing his his quality. So is that Bernardeschi? He's obviously talking about cash money. No, he's talking about cash money. Uh, <laughs> no, he's talking about Bernardeschi. Uh, and I just I, I I loved the the enthusiasm and the tell. That's why. You, you mean chose I it. love the enthusiasm and the <laughs> mm -hmm. why I chose that's it. why you chose it exactly. I want to exactly. peel the curtain back. I did not choose a clip for her. Is the word this week Jeff chose for me? You want to see how the sausage is made? There we go. Uh, here's Mike Newell's. <laughs> yeah, I think firstly a big shout out to the fans that made it tonight. Uh, we had I think around seventeen thousand, and they make a difference. You know, we we talked about this being a fortress for us and. <clears throat> keeping a, a streak going here and you know I thought the fans were were awesome tonight so thank you to them even though we haven't done mine yet my votes for Newell slash Annie because he just completely dispelled the myth of the announcement he's just like yeah it wasn't 25k guys it was 17k like right there in the post game press conference that's pretty amazing that's uh here's all right the 25,000 it's tickets yeah, yeah, they only, not, yeah, it's, it's a ton. Mm -hmm, exactly. Not to, it's so, it would be so easy for them to give the proper statement because they tabulate who the barcodes that they scan, but of course they want the inflated number. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here we go for me. And then I've got to mention, obviously, Young Spicer. I mean, that's a pretty special moment for the lad. Um, you know, he's got quality and, uh, you know, we had a feeling he'd score tonight. We had that conversation with him and, uh, yeah, defensively, I was proud of his work. So, I just love when he when he those pauses when you can sort of see the gears moving, and you're like, yeah. I wonder what he's thinking right now because he's like, we had a conversation about it, and you immediately imagine that it was like at the rotating restaurant in the CN Tower. You know? <laughs> like, it's just there's just there's just so much going on. All right, I'm going to the comments. Who wins? Looks like Mike Newell wins. I'm never going to win one of these. Uh, so that's a two, two tie. 
You I mean, and, to be you fair, it was so cold. Trying. There were guys around us clustering to cheer and yell where we, it's usually not as big a pocket. And uh, yeah, it does a lot to keep you warm when you're actually cheering for the team. Hey, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why these shows have been so much more fun this year. Not just we've been talking about it. You. So much more positivity. So much and we get to be joined by Annie, of course. It feels a Absolutely. little awkward, all the positivity, but it's good. It's good, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not used right? to being this positive. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. Uh, all right, <laughs> Annie, it's uh, it's your time to shine. I promise you we do this, and and I apologize for not preparing as, as, as well <laughs> as I should have. But we're going to cede the floor to you because I know this is important to you. It should be important to all of us. Um, what you've been doing with this Play Proud thing for the last little while, if you could just sort of give us the the Coles yeah. notes and, and, and go. I think a lot of people heard a lot about it last year, or hopefully you did. Um, it's a program from Common Goal, which is an international organization trying to promote good in soccer, basically. Uh, and Play Proud is a specific North American initiative ahead of the world men's world cup, especially trying to um, bring more inclusion and a welcome space uh, for the two S LGBTQ plus community, especially though our cohort last year, which was eight different teams across five different leagues with three reps, one supporter, one front office, one community side for each team working together. And the weird shit of being in a room full of 30 people supporting each other and trying to make positive change was whiplash <laughs> absolute whiplash it was amazing uh but this is the thing is where, where the first thing we sat down and talked about is what we wanted to do and then that we're looking at this community specifically but when you're working in these areas of trying to make more an inclusive welcoming space for people. And we're not talking about bringing people in as much as we're saying, we've always been here. You know, we are your friends next to you. So when you make these comments, you're actually making them to us, right? And, and we're looking at this space. It's not exclusive to us. It includes people with uh, different cultural backgrounds. It includes people with different uh, mobility issues. It's it's You're speaking for anyone who isn't able to automatically have a seat at the table, as they say, uh, which is cool because it's, it's when you're working to include people, it's a lot more fun than trying to like drive people away. And this is, this is just what we've been trying to focus on. So the overall program was consisted of two different training sessions, one at the start of the season, one at the end. And between those two week long sessions, we spent 12 hours a day together working on yeah. different uh, training techniques, conversation techniques, uh, which is great because, you know, I'm not a good speaker. So I'm like, hey, let's make some banners. All right. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, yeah, we, we as as the play part participants, put in 100 hours of training towards this. It's unbelievable. Wow. And at least that much time on our own in our city groups as well. So like last year, we did the banner painting at the Youth Pride Fest, uh, Summit. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic they're talking about this year, we're sort of like working up. Uh, and one of the things that we agreed to while well, the play proud training for us has ended at the end of last season, the three of us, plus JMO who's out there doing his thing now, he is the one who dragged us in the first place, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. Man, so proud of that guy. Uh, mm -hmm. but the three of us have made a commitment to keep working. So we are actively working with the team and with Launchpad, trying to make sure we're bringing these uh voices yeah. into any planning into any consultation into any communication and even earlier this afternoon um you know the league whatever the league christine at mls pulled a bunch of us into their pride committee conversation so the league is actually reaching out to listen to supporters Love in it. this context which you know every little step we get in there is amazing uh yeah, yeah. so going forward um our focus is more on education and communication than anything else. We're not going to be policing people's language. We're not going to be coming around, like looking to see who's the bad guy in the room. Uh, You're not? Damn. I was about to sign up. I want I mean, to. I was going to be your first man. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I swear like a sailor. So there's yeah. language things I have learned over time. We can all learn that 
some words change or their context changes. So maybe we don't use them. Yeah. Yeah. With people we respect. And it's not about, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to make people cry. It's not about hurting feelings. It's about showing respect for your friends. And that that's pretty much the bottom line. Uh, so go for it if anyone, you know, is looking to talk more, you know where to find me. I'm around the South End all the time. Uh, oh, cool. Someone likes it. <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't yell at her about the placement of the Legends banners. They're awesome. They're in the right <laughs> spot. Unless you want to maintain them from the wind oh. and the elements in, in your preferred spot. Please stop talking. Thank you very much. And, yeah. and trust me, we looked at a lot. The reason it took so long to get Legends Row up is because we went mm. and looked at a lot of different places in the stadium and found places, you know, where the wall is that thick. So maybe we're mm -hmm. not counting them there. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I do owe you, you can hear, I've had a cold for the last week, so there's been no tabulation on the latest round of Legends. It will mm -hmm. come. It could be Brennan. I mean, there's no way it isn't. They 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 did like a Star Trek letter writing campaign. Like those it, it those pretty prime supporter. Yeah, it was no, pretty wild. If it's not yeah. if it's not Brennan, I I can't imagine. Like it's Brennan. Yeah. It's gotta be Jimmy Brennan. I, yeah. But I'm not I'm not gonna if spoil. You guys make comments, sir. I'm not ignoring you, Nesker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you of guys? Of course, you're allowed comments? to ignore me. You can come out and find me anytime. Anytime you want to chat. Your kids want to talk about what it's like trying to find your identity. I'm around. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. If that means I, you Star Trek versus Star Wars, I'm willing to talk about that, those candies <laughs> as well. Trust me, I've had that conversation with her, and it is essential. Absolutely. And essential. We landed on Battlestar, right? Yeah. Yeah, we landed on Battlestar. We cheated, but uh, but listen, it it's so cool. It's so cool, and you know, yeah. obviously, uh, the easy segue into that would have been to talk about what happened at the U.S. Men's National Team game last night, and I don't you know uh, we all know what the solution is and it's just having yeah, a, a nice federation have better tactics so they don't have to rely on their supporters to well, do i, I also i also yeah i mean yeah in the bantery way but i think you know <laughs> you gotta start levying some real punishments out at this point and um you know and then i think we both uh took shots on that on that one account that that threw up uh footage of the 352 having the best time ever and and claiming that you know north american soccer fandom sucks so you know yeah. there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of wrinkles to this and it's you know it's amazing that we have you as as the representative like it's whole, i don't know if you i mean i've been around I mean, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm old for those who don't know i've yeah. been in the scene for over 30 years you know so it's uh i've seen things change yeah you've you've been in the shit um it's just it's just awesome and and uh you know long may it rain i kind of lost my train of thought there because you interrupted me but that, i have a uh, that, that, that's your... <laughs> yeah, that yeah. welcome to my world jeff <laughs> i have a question uh yeah. for annie so how can someone who was listening to this, how can they support you or how can they get involved in this? Well, most of the initiatives we're working on right now are very behind the scenes. Like we're trying okay. to pull together some trainings and that sort of thing. Um, there will be places that we will want to include more supporters for sure. Yeah. And word will definitely go out. I'm sure you guys will help me get the word out when that happens. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, just have the conversations uh, be good to each other. It's a novel concept. Support yeah. your people, no matter who your people are, build them up. Don't break them down. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, what's that raccoon say? Support TFC, eat garbage, but you know, also yeah. build a community. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great yeah, think, plug. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I awesome. that wrong. Is it garbage trash? Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Man. No, no, but I, I gotta tell you, G money, uh, uh, came in off the top rope at a girl nesker got nesker so there you go there you if go. anyone can it'd be me you stump the chump all right this is going to be the longest episode in the world but let's do it let's do our over-unders i've got mike newell's and we're gonna add annie to the uh to, to this cool. week's uh oh great because i'm really weekend. good at this part <laughs> we're none of us are this is that's the secret absolutely none of us are welcome to the theater of pain let's go did Mikey disappear? I oh. thought there was like a. <laughs> we've been so. Bad oh, oh, yeah, there is. There is. Oh, there is my God. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. The TTID over under. 
Wow. Mike Newell leaves our show, and we are just, just a, a mess. disaster. Just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. So, uh, first off, let's start with Alonzo Coelho. So we talked mm. about him a lot uh, throughout this show. I'm setting his over under at four and a half yellow cards this season. So Alonzo Coelho pick up at least five yellow cards this year. One of the things that the reason why I put this in is because we talked about it. He's, he's tackling a little bit more. How much is Davey Flora is going to rub off on him? Will there be some tactical fouls in the mix? So just to give you some context, last season in about 1,200 minutes, he's on pace to smash that. He picked up two yellow cards. Uh, this year so far, through five matches, he's started every single one of TFC's games. No yellow cards this year to start this year. So will he pick up five yellow cards this season? Annie, as our as our guest, I'm going to throw it to you first. I'm going to throw in a contingency here. Is the strike yeah. over yet? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Let's There's, assume that it's I'm going to go with over. Weeks. I'm going to yeah. go with yeah. over. They've been uh, yellow card happy. Uh, TFC oh God, in like the candy. league in yellow cards picked up actually so somehow some way alonzo cuello has found a way to avoid that it could just be the fact that he has this like innocent look on his face is like that kid can do no wrong <laughs> it's <laughs> easy to avoid way. yellow cards when you're playing beside davy flores that probably yeah, that's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i think i think the chat typically agrees jeff what do you think uh, i i mean I'm going to go over just because right now everybody gets a yellow card just 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 by existing. So I'm going yeah. over. It's a it's actually a resounding under if I just go through these quickly. Under. Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> Gord saying over. Okay, Martin right, under. Done, Josh right. under. Not um, changing mine. G Money. Koyo is the Thomas Caberlet of TFC. I can wow. love myself to give this reference. Um, okay. I'm going to go under as well. I think uh, okay. he's too kind. He's just too much, too much of a good person. And too kind? Uh, Mike Newell goes fact, under as well. Fun fact: he's got he's got his master's degree as well. So smart guy. In yellow he cards. Can talk, he can talk his way out of a yellow card. He's a smart guy. <laughs> Don't you um, get a yellow card for trying to talk yourself out of a yellow card? Not Isn't if you that do how soccer works. All right, all right, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, just do it constantly. Now you have a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Oh, excuse yeah, me. You can't give me a yellow card. I have a degree in no yellow cards. <laughs> Holds out the diploma. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> um, Where okay. was he keeping it? Nobody knows. All no right. short shorts. <laughs> no short shorts. He's got space. Um, mm. Luca Gavrin. Hey, we talked about him again. Uh, so I'm setting his over under at 10 and a half starts this year. So will Luca Gavrin make at least 11 starts this season? So, so far this year, three starts in 2024, as we talked about, two clean sheets in those three starts. Uh, will he push Sean Johnson for some for some starts here down the stretch? Will he make eight more starts? Uh, for context, Sean Johnson seems like he is not that far away from returning potentially even this weekend if not this weekend my guess is is second or the weekend after um all competitions yes so just to be clear so all jeff let's yeah. start with you for this one will he make at well, least 11 starts this year eight more starts i'm going under no. i'm going under as well we both are going under yeah I don't know if the chat agrees with you with this one. So we got we got a chat couple. Never unders. agrees with me. The chat Terrence. never ever agrees with me. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, we got over, over, over. Danny saying over. Recency bias, in. boys, boys All and girls, things. ladies, gentlemen. Uh, recency bias. Of course, and Sean's getting old. I don't know if I. He wow, is Gord. getting old, but he doesn't sleep act with like one that. eye open, buddy. <laughs> Mr. Bias saying <laughs> over. Yeah, uh, I'm going under. I'm with you guys. Uh, let's let's yeah. stay, you know, united here, and uh, we're not united because no, no. Mike Newell said over. No, oh. what did he say for Alonzo? He said under for Alonzo. Under for Alonzo. Okay, mm. so he's with us on the same page there, except for this one. Yeah. Um. Okay, this was a good one. Federico Bernadeschi. I think I might, I might have set it too high, but actually maybe let me know. So I set his over under for total goals scored this year at six and a half. So will Federico Bernardeschi score at least seven goals this season? So, so far this year, he, uh, obviously no goals, 
Last year, he had five goals, played a ton of minutes. The year before, he had eight goals in 13 games played. Uh, obviously, took most of TFC's penalties as well. So will Federico Bernardeschi score at least seven goals this year? What do you say, Annie? We're trying positivity here, right? So I'm going to say over. It's positive vibes. It's been that way since the start of the year. Yep. Jeff? Uh, I'm going to go over. Yeah, I'm going to go over. I'm going to give uh, Fede the benefit of the doubt. Well, I'm go over. That would not have come. Because I, I, I've i been saying it. I think the floodgates year. open after he gets the first one. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and and 6.5 is a, is a good number for me. I, I, I think it might happen. Well, honestly, I'd I probably, uh, probably guess put it right on the, the money there because it seems like it, the chat split. Um, I'm mm -hmm. going to go under. And I think cool. because of what I touched on earlier, I don't think TFC need him to score as many goals. That might that might change if Insigne is out for an extended yeah. period of time. I think more pressure will definitely be put on Fede's shoulders to produce. But if Insigne is healthy, knock on wood, hopefully he can get back quickly. I, I I'm gonna take under for Fede. Okay. okay. And uh Newell is over. Over. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh Kosey Thompson. Mr. Short Shorts. Mr. Short Shorts. So we we touched on him. He's been a frequent uh, a Perry off the bench. A Perry. Is that that's a word? Whatever. We'll use it. Uh, four in five games <laughs> so the, far. Is year. that the plural of appearances? I love that. Oh my god, I'm clipping that. I love that so much. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just I'm dying. Um, <laughs> so all four of his appearances off the bench this year. Uh, he made 14 last season. 24 in 2022 so i'm setting his over under for appearances made at 23 and a half will he make at least 24 appearances this season in all competitions for toronto fc i'm i'm saying yes i'm saying that yeah. he's seeing something in the kid so he'll see if he can bring it out he definitely is because he was one of the first guys off the bench game one yeah and he still is going yeah. to him <laughs> over and over um over and over again jeff what do you say i say over as well yeah uh, he's going to come up on 20 on 23.5 really quickly we're not talking starts we're talking appearances mm -hmm. it's yeah. all comps yeah we're over we're I'm, and he's, I'm he seems like a guy that that herman trusts to to like see out a game like if tfc have a mm -hmm. lead he's comfortable putting him in those situations uh that said i'm going under <laughs> as much as I always do this, I'm going under. Contrarian. Now, uh, is, is we've what been, I talked about. We've been like, mm -hmm. when, when TFC are healthy, he drops down that depth chart, right? We're talking about guys yeah. like, you know, Jaquil Marshall Reddy coming off the bench instead of Kosi Thompson. Heck, even even their their heart of the park, we don't know exactly how exact they're they're going to line up there. Could a guy like you know, Maddie Longstaff or Alonzo Cuello or, you know, someone else come off the bench in that scenario. Could what happens when Brandon Cervania gets healthy? Could TFC also go out and add to this group come summertime? Those are all factors I'm kind of leaning on here to, to say that I, I don't think he's going to make 24 appearances, you know, off the bench. But just my thought, Gray here saying we should have made this the question. Will his shorts get shorter <laughs> by two inches? Then then he's going to <laughs> prison, season. Gray. Yeah. And he's going to prison. All right. So no, absolutely not. Um uh Mikey, you 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 uh you you Mikey does. Uh um and uh Newell is over. He's over. He's over. Okay. Just yeah. me then. Yeah. The trick, Mr. Bond, is that TFC are never healthy. So that's yeah, that why he's gonna it. go over. Because you said that I was like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um all right, so that's, that's our over under for this week. That's yeah, our over yeah, under. Yeah, we didn't do we didn't do five. Are we done? No, we can't be done. We're no, done? we're done for this week. We'll we'll have more. Jeff, don't okay. worry. This okay, isn't cool. going away. We'll have more. <laughs> okay, cool. Be we're about to start crying. We want to, yeah, um, we want to, we want to drag this out as long as possible, Jeff, to try and get us. Because I love editing. So I love have... editing my potato face on a Tuesday morning. It's my favorite thing to do. Just <laughs> zoom in right in, so I get all the mental illness. Let's let's go. Let's go right until December. Um, uh, let's do it. Uh, burning question. We're almost done this marathon. Let's get into it. App. 
All right, hold on. I just lost my cursor. And right on cue. Yeah, there it is. This has been the worst transition podcast in Toronto to Life by History. <laughs> um, no, this is the burning question. Uh, the league's media, they're selling Toronto FC to start the season. I think, uh, in particular, we're referring to uh, Sasha Question and what he had to say. Yeah, after why would we care? Training. But yeah. 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 Hey, meet you in the tunnel club been at halftime, Sash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see what you're saying about TFC there, buddy. Um, Josie on speed case, dial. In mm. case you missed it, uh, MLS did a segment uh, that was buying or selling TFC's stock. And the majority had had said selling Toronto FC stock and Sasha question in particular. Uh, he had said that TFC aren't creating enough chances. So we pitched this out to you, uh, you the fans, and we want to know, are you selling Toronto FC stock? Are you buying Toronto FC stock? Uh, let's see what you had to say. So G money talks and it's a very knowledgeable insight here. You buy when the stock is still low. Not once all the insider slash bandwagon money has already piled in. Get in while the stock is still at a discount. Buy, buy, buy. Um, good start. With stock market advice, by the way. For you're missing the whole like, fair market. Yeah, thing G, though, right? G money's a crypto. The <laughs> <laughs> bear market, dude. Yeah. Um, all right, Noel Allen. Uh, I think TFC Live is buying. And that's all that matters, really. We all turn up every week. These guys just want a, a team from the major U.S. markets to win. We still need a few players, but we're going in the right direction. So yeah. those who know, know, essentially, is what Noel Allen is saying. Um, mm -hmm. So Monkey kind of echoing that. I'll bet Atlanta is still top 10 <laughs> when the power rankings come out. You uh, know it. You shots know fired. it, baby. Yeah, shots <laughs> fired. I was talking to a couple of their supporters today. It's like, mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So Forza Italia saying he had bought some TFC stock early. So he's saying retrospective to our current position and trajectory, I'd neither sell or buy. He's holding <laughs> on to his current shares, which have already made a significant gain from preseason share price. And Someone's I think everyone sold can... their messy tickets. That, that <laughs> the messy lines there. Tickets. And that yeah. is someone who, who sold their messy tickets early. That might be yeah. Martin Bailey's burner, actually. I'm going to have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think that's that's a good point. Like, where if you would have told anybody that TFC would have 10 points from five games to start the year, that TFC would only have one loss to start the year, that TFC would have four clean sheets from their first five matches to start the year, we would have called you insane. There's no insane. way that's happening. Um, Wait, I'm but, awake, right? I am awake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're <laughs> not true. Uh, so, I mean, if you bought that stock low, you are definitely cashing in well right now, and you're very happy, just like Toronto FC is. Uh, last one, mm -hmm. the vagabond. A uh, bunch of short sellers always messing up the market. We're buying, baby. There it is. We it's buying, baby. Nice. We're swimming in cash, but no cash money. We we're we're living in a in a in a in a, in a whiplash world. Yeah. yeah. Because we're a cashless stadium. Is that the yeah. there you go. There it is. Oh yeah, we're <laughs> that was, that was should have known we're a cashless so stadium. Good. My goodness. Yeah. That is so good. Annie, can you Maybe make a, a banner that says we're a cashless no, no, stadium with no. cashless <laughs> on it? And I just oh. be on my side. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so good. <laughs> uh, uh, Sebastian, Sebastian Jacob, um, if you go on X, formerly known as Twitter, there's a few of the of the TFC intelligentsia that have like parsed out who the trialists are by looking at screen caps and and yeah, I just uh, uh, Calcio Coolio. Uh, I hope I didn't bastardize the name. Has done a pretty good thread about it. Looks like we're in bed with Sheffield United in a in a profound way uh if the rumors are to be believed so the trialists uh are they strikers wingers defenders who knows who knows we're not signing a number nine ever we're not we're never <laughs> signing a number nine just get used to it we're, we're never ever getting a number nine we're all going to scream for it but we're never getting one that's just the way it is um we're here mikey you want to do the cold read i'm not gonna let you do it for everyone's sake 
I've been do- I've I've been doing it on uh, on on Look at it. It's All been right. fantastic. Let's do it. Hmm. All you. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Mm-mm. Mm, give me a E flat just so I can tune. Uh, exciting news before we wrap up tonight. The Tunnel Club post game reaction show. It's returning to Twitter spaces. My uh, my old co-host. There's a lot of Mike in here. Mike Newell's old co-host, Sean Levy, will be back in the saddle with his new co-host, Noel Allen, to react Ooh. to their takes on TFC matches. Check it out next Sunday at noon on X Spaces and listen and interact live. How'd I do? Massive Great news. Massive yeah. news. Yeah, you, you deliver the news in a very professional fashion, Jeff. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and you delivered that line very professionally with a straight face. Nice. The <laughs> dripping sarcasm. Absolutely <laughs> dripping. My my computer is soaking oh. wet. It's like in a lake right now. Um, <laughs> you can do the rest because I, I suck at it. Mm. Yeah, but Tunnel, uh, Tunnel Club, super exciting, right? Twitter spaces has kind of been uh, a thing that died down a bit. But when it was at its peak when it was live man that thing was a party to jump into so i'll try and jump in those uh as much as i can i know jeff will be around obviously mike newell and then you know sean and now noel allen which i think uh, is going to be an exciting addition noel's been a uh, been a part of the tfc community a prominent voice i'd say in the community <laughs> and someone who always always has something smart to add so i'm looking forward to their insights remember you can catch that after every game we'll also Find a way uh, to put it up on our podcast feed as well for these the way guys. Is me secret. The way is me. But yeah, we'll find the way. That. The way is Jeff. Yeah, he he knew that mm-hmm. was uh, that was directed towards him. Uh, Jeff will mm-hmm. find a way to get that <laughs> podcast up. So if you miss it live, uh, you can always tune in there. Uh, the Tunnel Club is also a good way for fans to, you know, jump on, share their opinions as well. That's a good thing about Twitter Spaces. You know, something like this, we'd love to have you guys like call into this show. We just don't have the ability to make that work uh but twitter spaces we have that ability so uh during its peak it was it was one of my favorite pieces of content to to do and favorite little you know hour whatever it is that we get to spend um but it's been a long show a lot of talk uh chatter annie thank you so much for for taking the time and to join us you are always welcome on our show yeah yeah uh we look forward to everything else you're gonna do there uh with play proud i got the name right play proud yeah yeah mm-hmm. play proud awesome, awesome. yeah we look forward we want to shirt i'm not oh, really wearing go. the mexico united shirt it's actually a play proud shirt <laughs> <Mexico> <laughs> nice. united, who by the way are an awesome team if you ever you know in albuquerque i'm a i'm a mexico united guy i don't i don't go for the new stuff i'm a i'm an old <laughs> yeah, i'm an know. old soul so yeah 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 yeah, well, yeah. Andy, we look forward to hearing uh, more about the initiatives and more about the stuff that you, you were all doing uh, behind the scenes there. And uh, let us know, you know, keep us updated, whatever yeah. we can do to help support you. Uh, I'm back anytime. Love it. Do it. Love it. Thanks, guys. Um, so on that note, thank you to all of our listeners. As always, uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Toronto Till I Die. Uh, be sure you to follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. The username is at TTID show or search Toronto till I die to find us new platform. Uh, a lot of people, surprisingly enough, surprising amount of people uh, that do listen to this podcast actually didn't have Twitter or X before, wasn't able to interact with us as much. We're seeing a ton of interactions, engagement, we're having some conversations with you all on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, be sure to check us out. Give us that follow. Again, as always, we're also on Twitter, X, whatever you, it is that you want to call it. And of course, for most of you that are watching this, we are live on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, really helps us uh, you know, hit that algorithm a little bit more on YouTube, which we have been, I'd say lately, our numbers have been really, really good and really positive. Stupid. And that's all thanks to to everyone that you know tunes into the show on a weekly basis. So thank you so much uh, for the podcast listeners. Please rate review wherever you get your pods you know you know how this goes um, and i'm and i'm bad at cold reads <laughs> to be fair it was improv to okay fair, all right. I, didn't, I didn't read it all right it was improv. yes and yes and it was earnest indeed there was an mm-hmm. earnest it was it was earnest goes go. to camp that's for sure <laughs> that for we need mike sure back. yeah yeah you want me anyways to, you want me on behalf of mm-hmm. mike newell on behalf of jeffrey nesker on behalf of annie hart i'm michael singh 
Thank you for listening to another episode. We will see you next week. Peace, everyone. And wait, and wait, and baby, I'm TFC till I die.